Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we'll be unboxing truly a hyper scooter amongst electric kick scooters. This is the Nami Bernie Viper. And today we're going to find out if it's truly a candidate for a president of electric scooters. Because it's Bernie. I had to do it. Let me tell you more about it. Broadway. Right away also big thanks to both Nami and Zvin Namiasto for providing me this scooter for testing purposes. Naturally, all the links are in the description below. And as you can see here, and by the fact that there is not a single scooter in my apartment, this channel is now a mostly EUC focused channel. However, I did do quite a bit of scooter reviews and because this scooter is so special, I definitely want to get a shot at trying the Bernie and I'm very grateful uh, to Nami Electric for providing me this unit and especially to Michael Shah for being such an enthusiast and engineer, such an incredible mastermind behind making the scooter. Because this scooter, if you have uh, checked out the community, is very, very highly anticipated. Because the craftsmanship and detail of the scooter should be something out of this world, which naturally we will check out. Imagine it's being like a motorcycle almost in terms of quality. There are some features that haven't been seen yet in the electric scooter world, so I'm very curious to find out what's up with that. With that out of the way, let's open it up. <laughs> and as I will be unboxing the scooter, I'll try to tell you everything that's interesting uh, about the scooter, like all the features, but truly there's so much that it's really sometimes hard to grasp how many interesting features and solutions this scooter has. Like even the packaging is some sort of like stronger honeycomb uh, packaging, which tries to ensure that your scooter won't get broken in shipping. Uh, you see this additional tape here because the scooter was already opened by Zvina Miasto and they made a video on it. So yeah, that's why it has a tape. Wow, this is really, <laughs> I know I'm right now showing you cardboard but I haven't seen this thick of a cardboard box for a scooter yet. Now I had this Dualtron already closed for shipping, but I just wanted to show you the difference and it's, wow. Right now we are comparing cardboard boxes. That's what the channel is all about. <laughs> and just for kicks, I measured it. This is actually two centimeters wide cardboard and this is half a centimeter wide. This is not standard packaging as this was already opened, so it's not a full-on new unboxing experience, but let's see what's inside. <laughs> woo! Woo! You are a nice set of carbon. Jesus Christ. Oh, does your scooter have a carbon stem? Never been so excited about the stem. Oh, that's a... That's a long, rigid, good-looking stem. <laughs> and that's what she said. Now, I, I'll show you everything in detail, maybe a bit later in the B-roll, but... <laughs> All right, I had the first look at the tubular frame. Dang, son. And here we have the clamp. Oh, boy. That's a nice set of a clamp, if I ever seen one. All right, that looks very solid. I'll show you everything in detail in a bit. I'll just try to assemble it first. Yeah, carbon stem wiring for a hole, which is in carbon. Epic. I think at first they wanted to have an aluminium stem, but it turned out that carbon would be better. So I can't say no to that. Let's open it up. A set of nice grips. Front light should be 2200 lumens. So also best in class in terms of scooters. Also thumb throttle. <laughs> also, this is a bicycle size handlebar, so if you want to get a different sort of handlebar, you can buy it for the scooter, like a wider one. Although this is already pretty wide at around 62 centimeters. Ooh, that, head, that headlight is so big, so massive. And that's also what she said. Tighten it not too strongly because we might need to adjust it later. All right, handlebar in place, more or less. <laughs> nice. Poof. 
here we have chargers and these should be two chargers right out of the box so you have sort of fast charging uh, in the box with one charger it charges 12 hours which is not too quick mud guard okay we'll need that toolbox right away and with twin chargers you will charge the scooter up in around six hours not the fastest time out there but definitely the fastest time out of the box in a scooter xve chargers i have the same exact one for my king song s18 fanless charger this is pretty nice if you want to charge overnight wow it's a big oh f f god that's a that's a big deck big black deck <laughs> oh my god the amount of puns in this video <laughs> 47 kilograms uh, hey, hey. come on yep yep uh, uh, yes, yes. no yes <laughs> easy more strong cardboard in the cardboard Whew. and here it is I gotta say, this looks so, so, so good. Doesn't look like any of the cheap Chinese scooters I've seen before. Like this is so matte black, I had to shine a special light onto it just to make it visible on the camera. This thing, Viper, looks like Batman's scooter, like no shit at all. This looks so freaking cool. Wow. So, as you can see right away, this scooter is totally different from everything else as it has a tubular frame. And, and here you can see like all the welds, precision welded frame, which will give you a lot more rigidity than just like a metal box you get on pretty much everything else. But this looks like, this looks like it's a scooter that could withstand like an earthquake or something. The deck is pretty huge, measuring 30 centimeters across and 56 in length with an additional uh, footrest you get around 80 centimeters so, so lots of room for your feet there's also two strips of grip tape here and a nami logo and the cool thing here is also that nami is actually testing every single scooter uh, before they put it in the box to assure that everything is all right really nice right away here in the front you can see hydraulic brakes nutt with 165 millimeter rotors um, for this price, maybe I would like to see my girl once, maybe they're working on it in the future. Really good brakes though, but you know, you can always go better. A small mud guard here in the front, probably it will deflect all the spraying, hopefully. It looks quite a bit small because here on the sides it doesn't really seem to work. But everything looks really properly machined. This C-shaped suspension also looks very solid and robust. And here you can see 165 millimeter the dampers are both in the front and the rear and you can adjust rebound of this uh, shock and the cool thing is that you have both 165 in the front and in the back so if you want to have air suspension like a dnm shock or rock shocks whatever this is a off-the-shelf part you can get at a mtb store so if you have a burny desire to upgrade the suspension on the scooter then you can do it and here in the back you can also see a huge Horn. hopefully you can see it on the camera probably it's gonna get covered in mud <laughs> I guess and expose wiring here that doesn't look too good in my eyes right away here in the front we can also see the charge ports so twin charge ports with uh, GX16-3 ports a bit too exposed for my taste uh, in terms of both the horn wiring and this, the, the, these ports but hopefully this will just work well while we are here we can also take a look at the folding mechanism which is pretty outstanding you have this big clamp which is both twisting and locking in place and then you can also fold the scooter once you lift it up and do I lift it up it's a bit yeah here so it, first you have to like lift the whole stem up and then you can fold it uh, the stem seems also wide enough to have no wobbles at all, but I guess that's something we'll have to find out in the final review. Then we have, like, sort of like lift it up, then down, and it snaps into place, and then we can screw it in. 
pretty firmly. And then additionally, we need to tighten that down. So hopefully we'll have no stem wobbles whatsoever. Uh, this scooter is supposed to be also waterproof. Now I have to get an like, official statement from Michael on that, but I think he designed the scooter very much to be ridden in rain. Right away, we can also mount the mud guard here in the back. Sadly, I have to say, this doesn't look big enough for the scooter. Like, honestly, it's like putting a pair of thongs. You know your whole ass is exposed. This scooter in the back needs a pair of boxers. However, this thong of a mud guard does look pretty slick. And sexy. Very cool solution here as well. The wiring for the back brake doesn't even go into the compartment with the battery, which is by the way, a 72 volt, 35 amp hour battery. So uh, around the same size as the uh, 011X. However, these are Panasonic cells, which are in my eyes better cells than uh, the LG ones that uh, are in the 011X. And it also uses pretty good copper material for um, the connections of each battery cell. Like this is, these are things that usually you don't care about when buying a scooter. However, it's good to know that uh, the selection of parts and the manufacturing is really on a high level here. Uh, around the scooter, we can also see a uh, light strip, which looks exactly the same like the one I had underneath my charging station there. It fell down, so that's why I have it here. Well, maybe it does look a bit different. Uh, it has a lot more diodes here, the Viper. And with all of these things out of the way, I think finally we can turn it on. Just a long press here on the stem, which is really high up. And oh my God, it has such a pro display. Let's see about that lighting. Yes, looks really cool on the side. And very, very bright as the LED strips are just exposed. I hope they just stay in place, but it looks like they're covered with silicone so that should be fine. And here on the rear, we have a set of like integrated uh, taillights, really bright. Are they flashing when you're braking? Yeah, they are. And the front light, dude, that's so strong. Like, let, let me grab the camera real quick. So the front light looks really, really powerful and it also has a beam, essentially like a motorcycle. So it won't blight like any pedestrians. And just for comparison, Let's check out uh, how a unicycle light would perform. So this is the NAMI light and this is the veteran Sherman light. Still the Sherman looks quite a bit brighter. I don't know if the NAMI gets brighter uh, when you ride faster, but that's the NAMI light for you for now. And maybe the most impressive thing about the Viper is its heart and its display here on the, on the front and its configuration abilities. For me, it's the first time I've seen such a pro screen uh, on an electric scooter. And Orion also can have a display like that, but it's on a iPad. This is like already, I mean, iPod, this is already integrated. Looks really slick and I think it will be also re really well readable in uh, broad daylight. It just shows you the speed. Allegedly, it will go 100 kilometers an hour, so we'll have to check on that. And the amazing thing about the Viper is that it has two sine wave controllers. And normally, scooters don't have sine wave controllers. They have cheap uh, square wave controllers, which are way less efficient and way less configurable. And sine wave controllers are way better. And this scooter has two times 50 amps, so 8,400 watts in total. Should be really quick. And because it has these different controllers, it also, it also has different uh, buttons here on uh, the scooter. It doesn't have like the usual Eco Turbo. It has a set of buttons here, like on an e-bike and a thumb throttle, which I don't want to touch yet. Here on the side, you can also see additional buttons, uh, which is the light button. Let's see if it works. Yes, it works. Turn signals. Yes, turn signals work, work as well. Oh, and they have like this cool pattern. Looks like an Audi or whatever. It looks really cool. And the indicators are also shown here on the screen. Really, really nice. And they stay on as long as you want until you press them. Horn, extremely loud, extremely loud. And your TT brakes, uh, really nice. 
uh, and now let's just dive into the screen. So uh, it has five different modes. Eco is like the 25 kilometers an hour, I guess. Then there is, uh, I guess, dynamic or something. Sport, which is super fast. And then you have two additional modes, which is custom one and custom two, where you can select all the different parameters on the scooter. And you can also activate cruise control by holding on to the minus button for a second. And if you press plus for a second, I think it then activates turbo. And there's a special like sign here that will appear when you can use turbo, which will give you like 12% more power uh, if the controllers are cool enough. Because yes, this uh, scooter also does have um, sensors in their controllers so you can see if the temperature is right there you, you won't burn the controllers then really nice uh, however it doesn't have any sensor in the motor which is a bummer maybe it doesn't need that button I think it would be nice so then you can press the mode button and then you can go into the advanced settings I guess or you press it twice let's see Yes, so we'll configure our custom mode later, but first let me also show you the main settings, which is uh, P2 is the display brightness, P3 is the time the scooter is on, when nothing is done to the scooter. So P4 is the units of distance, so zero is kilometers, one is miles, and that's the voltage of the system, 72 volts. P6 is the number of magnets in the motor. P7 is kickstart or zero start and size of the tires 11 inches. This has pretty similar tires, wheels to the Dwaldron Thunder. And P9 is the speed regulator. Um, I mean, that's what they call in the manual, but it's basically cruise control. So let me put that on. P10 shows you the efficiency of the controller. P11 shows you the maximum controller current. P12 is the maximum temperature of the controllers before they reduce the power of the controllers to 85%, so 110 degrees. That's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, P13 is the value of remaining power before it switched automatically to um, eco mode. So it's pretty cool. You can just navigate, say how many percent of battery you still want before it switches to eco mode so you can drive safely home. Really nice, didn't see that on a scooter either. Uh, P14 is a password to the scooter if you want to lock it, really cool. Okay, so these are all of the basic settings, but now let's move on to these custom settings. Okay, I have to press uh, mode two times again. So here we can select how aggressive the start is of the front motor. We'll make it five, and we'll also make uh, the other one five, back motor. Then 90, I think, is the max power output. Uh, let's put it to 100. Then we have, okay, the output of the rear motor then. So we can really configure here how much power is in the front motor, how much in the rear motor. Usually the front motor just spins out of the control when you start and in turns it's not really the best to have the maximum amount of power in the front motor. So here you can actually customize it, really nice. P5 is the maximum speed from zero to 100% you can have in this mode. P6 is uh, how strong the electronic brake is. So you can set that up as well. We can leave it in one for now. P7 is uh, the amount of turbo you get in the turbo mode. So let's set it also to five maximum. And that's basically all the settings you can get on this display. Pretty ridiculous how much options is available here. All in all on the display, there is the speed. Here you can see that the turbo mode can be activated now. Uh, the battery indicator, 83%, really nice. Um, then here we can see that the lights are on. This, I don't know, I'll have to check. Oh yeah, here you have also additional parameters like current speed, average speed, maximum speed, and the range. And is there anything else you can browse? Yeah, odometer, how many G4s you're pulling. That's really insane. Uh, voltage of the system, 816 volt. So I need to charge it up a little bit. Average something, I don't know. CR, I'll have to read that up. <laughs> CF, I guess that's the temperature maybe of the controllers. And then we're back in the trip odometer. So really, really, really many configuration options here in the scooter. So I guess this will be it for now in terms of the unboxing of the scooter. My initial impressions are, wow, it looks very nice. And if it does ride as nice as it looks, then we're in for a big treat in terms of the Nami Viper. So I have now three days to spend with the scooter to ride the hell out of it. And yeah, I think I'm gonna enjoy it. 
So, if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.